This poem is uh, about periods, huh? And menstruation. Oh my God, are we really talking about that out loud? We don't do that. So uh, it is inspired by my own daughter. I have three sons, one daughter. She's 14 years old, and uh, she's taller than I am. And she, she started her period and, uh, last year, and it was rather dramatic. And I had prepped her. But there's no real, like, there's no adequate preparation for blood coming out of your vagina. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So she comes out of the bathroom on a Saturday morning, and she's clutching bloody underwear, and she's hyperventilating. I noted that. Her brothers also noted that. And we then had to quickly strategize to figure out how we were going to address what looked to be some burgeoning shame. You know what I'm saying? Like she was already beginning to process her body like it was a liability. And I didn't want that for her. That's an awful inheritance that women and girls have. And I didn't want that for her. So I threw her a period party, all right? <laughs> yes, I did. And uh, all my homies showed up dressed in red. And uh, <laughs> and the food was red and the drinks were red. And we all collectively raised the roof to my daughter's shedding uterus. Now, let me say this. It was not some secret coven of women and girls, OK? My sons were there. Their friends were there. That is an important thing. It can't just be some sidebar, backdoor conversation between women about how it's holy. No, no, no. Brothers, huh? You too have been misinformed about periods and the functions of our bodies. I'm here today to learn you. Okay, that shit is magnificent. We bleed five days, don't die. You try. You try. <laughs> now. So, <laughs> so, this poem's from my daughter. It's called The Period Poem. After the period party, she was really kind of levitating and, and celebratory of all of that stuff. And then, she sent me a screenshot of a tweet, and in 140 characters, this, this idiot used all of the shame-based language that I was trying to sort of un undo for her. And she wanted me to respond to it. Rather than tweet him back, I wrote a poem about it. So this is that poem. Again, grab, grab your kids if you need to. OK. Dude on Twitter says, quote, I was having sex with my girl when she started her period. I dumped that bitch immediately, end quote. Dear nameless dummy on Twitter, you're the reason my daughter cried funeral tears when she started her period. The sudden grief she felt after the matriculation from childhood and the induction into a reality that she was going to have to negotiate people like you and your disdain for what her body can do. Herein begins an anatomy lesson infused with feminist politics because I hate you. <laughs> Twitter dummy, there is a thing called a uterus. Yeah. It sheds itself every 28 days or so, or in my case, every 23 days, because I've always been a rule breaker. But that's the anatomy part. I digress. The feminist politic part is that women know how to let things go, how to let a dying thing leave the body, how to regenerate, how to become new, just waxing and waning, not unlike the moon and tides, both of which influence how you behave. I digress. Uh, Twitter dummy, women have vaginas that actually speak to each other. By this I mean, if we're with our mothers, our sisters, our friends, our menstrual cycles will actually sink the fuck up, huh? My own cervix is mad influential. Everybody I love knows how to bleed with me. Hold on to that, because there's a metaphor in it. But when your mother carried you, the ocean in her belly is what made you buoyant, made you possible. You had it under your tongue when you burst through her skin, wet and panting from the heat of her body, the body whose machinery you now mock on social media, that body wrapped you in everything that was miraculous about it and sung you lullabies laced in platelets without which you wouldn't have no Twitter account at all, motherfucker, I digress. See, it's entirely possible that we know the world better 
because of the blood that visits some of us. It interrupts our favorite white skirts, shows up at dinner parties unannounced. Blood will do that, period. <laughs> blood is the biggest siren, and we understand that blood misbehaves. It doesn't wait for a hand signal or a welcome sign above the door. And when you deal in blood over and over again like we do, when it keeps returning to you, that makes you a warrior. And while all good generals know not to discuss battle plans with the enemy, let me say this to you, dummy, on Twitter. If there is any balance in the universe at all, you are gonna be blessed with daughters. <laughs> blessed. You know, etymologically, bless means to make bleed. See, now it's a lesson in linguistics. In other words, blood speaks. I mean, that's the message, but stay with me. Your daughter's going to teach you what all men must one day come to know, that women made of moonlight, magic, and macabre will make you know the blood. Oh, we're going to get it all over the sheets and car seats. We're going to do that, period. We're going to introduce you to our insides. And if you are as unprepared as we sometimes are, it can get all over you and leave a forever stain. So to my daughter, should anybody be foolish enough to mishandle the wild geography of your body, how it rides a red running current like any good wolf or witch. Well, that's when you bleed, boo. Give that blood a biblical name, something of stone and mortar. Name it after Eve's first rebellion in that garden. Name it after the last little girl who had her genitals mutilated in Kinshasa, and that was this morning. Give it as many syllables as there are unreported rape cases. Name that blood something holy, something mighty, something in hieroglyphs, something unlanguageable, something that sounds like the end of the world. Name it for the roar between your legs and for the women who refuse to be nameless here. You bleed. Anyhow, spill your impossible scripture all over the good furniture. Bleed and bleed and bleed on everything he loves, period. Thank you so much, La Omar. <laughs>